So for this video, I'm going to show you how to create a user-defined route. So I have three virtual machines, and they're on different subnets, but they're in the same virtual network. And for demo VM1, I'm just installing IIS on it, and you know I'm going to open port 80 on it for inbound port, and um, and they'll all be able to access the you know IIS server because you know they're gonna connect to demo vm one's uh, private IP and be able to communicate using you know the standard network security group but for this use case for user defined route I want all you know traffic to go through um, subnet B so I would have you know, demo VM3 go through B before going to subnet A or VM1 to access IIS. So I'm just creating a route to go through here before going to the VM1. And, you know, the use case could be because, you know, demo VM2 is a virtual appliance, you know, it's a firewall, so it's filtering the traffic coming through and accepting it and denying it. That's the reason why we want to go through it before going to demo VM1. And since all of these are, you know, Windows virtual machines, I'm gonna, it, it's this one, in order to be virtual appliance and act like that for the user to find route, I'm gonna have to install, I'm gonna have to make it, assign a role to it and it's routing services. So anyway, um, let me add port 80. Okay, and now we're going to go to VM2. And actually before we add the role, um, let's see if we could connect to this. So. Yeah, let's just connect to uh, VM2 and then put in the private IP address of VM1 to see if we could uh, connect to it through private IP, connect to IIS. I'll come back when I'm logged in and everything. So anyway, this is connected into, remoted into VM2. Um, so let's get, so I just want to show here you know, VM1, IS is working. And so let's get its uh, private IP. Let's see if we can access IS. So it works. So now let's uh, let's create a route table. So I want MRG and East US because that's where my virtual machines are. You know my virtual network. And just give it a name. Just custom route and propagate it. Um, create it and come back once ready. Alright, so it's ready. So now let's go to uh, routes and let's add a route and just give it a name, whatever. Custom route. And this is saying for what addresses um, should it be should it be applicable for this route table. So you could just give the address prefix of the subnets or of the entire virtual network. So, duplicate. So currently all our virtual machines, subnets, whatever, are part of um, this one net virtual network. So you just go to it and say copy its address space. All right, so next top type. So where do we want to uh, direct the traffic to? 
Um, so this virtual network gateway, virtual network internet, virtual appliance, and none. For our use case, we have virtual appliance. So the next hop address, we want it, you know, we said, um, we want it uh, in VN2, subnet B. So we want traffic to go through here, all traffic to go through here before we're going to its destination of VN1, if we're trying to reach IS there. So we get its private IP, and that's its address. And ensure you have IP forwarding enabled on your virtual appliance. So click OK. And it says IP forwarding. Uh, but before we do that, actually, let's see that demo VM2 is part of uh, demo VM2 subnet. So we got associated this custom route to the subnet to that subnet. So associate, choose your virtual network, which is demo VM1 VNet, and subnet VM2. Is our virtual appliance subnet. So come back when it's ready. So now let's go back to the VM2 and look. It can't access the IS server on, on VM1, and that's because demo VM3 doesn't know how to route the traffic to demo VM1 because, you know, we're, we didn't enable the IP forwarding on it. So let's go to. Um, demo vm3 and let's enable IP forwarding, go to its NIC, IP configurations, choose it. Uh, no, don't click that actually. IP configurations and IP forwarding enabled. Save. And now we need to add the role to, to demo 3. Um, when we connect to it, so to uh, have remote services, so I'll come back after I'm connected. All right, so it's ready. So add the role. It's a role. Remote access. Next. 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 And routing, add features, next, 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 install. Come back when it's ready. Okay, it's done. So you can say close, click here, notification, open to getting started wizard. Deploy, VPN only. Right click it, the VM1 configure enable routing remote access. So next, I want a custom configuration. I want LAN routing. Next, finish. I'll start the service. Uh, you know, okay, so now it understands to go through that. But the thing is, what I just realized is that this is demo of the VM3 and I put I wanted VM2 to act as the virtual appliance that's why I set up the custom route for in the route table so it's not gonna work when we go to de demo VM2 and we, we try to do this again because this one should be the one that we set the you know put the to roll on and it's not going to work because it so basically all the steps I did after, uh, let's go to route table all the steps I did after I made this sub that two is fine and the route is fine but when I when I I should have instead of demo three and enable port forwarding on this one. I should have done it on port on VM2. And then um, I should have added that role. 
and the routing and remote access service and did that on VM2. Um, so it's just, and then I should have actually tried to connect to the IIS on VM3 and then I'll go through VM2. So just make those changes and that's how to do it. User defined routes.